Hi everyone, Brianna Dingard here. Welcome back to my channel. Continuing on with our mini theme of amusement park science, we're gonna be talking about the physics of roller coasters today. So when I got to go to Universal, there were a couple of new roller coasters there that I hadn't gotten to ride yet, um, such as Velocicoaster and Hagrid's Motorbike Adventure. And I believe we rode those like probably five times each. And they were a lot of fun. So today we're gonna to talk a little bit about the physics of roller coasters and learn the science behind why roller coasters are just so much fun to ride. The physics of roller coasters all comes really down to a couple of main themes. Gravity, our good old friend, inertia, another good friend, centripetal force, and a lot of conversion between potential and kinetic energy. And I'll address where in the roller coaster ride each of those occur. So I want us to all picture that we're on a roller coaster, about to have a lot of fun. And if you don't really like roller coasters, this is gonna be a really fun one because you're not actually on a roller coaster. So as you go up the first hill of a roller coaster, typically, unless it's some sort of launch coaster or something like that, typically you are being carried up a very large first hill by some sort of mechanism. And that first hill you go up is gonna be the largest hill of the roller coaster. So as that mechanism is carrying you up that hill, it's necessary in the first place because you don't have any energy yet in order to go through the rest of the ride. And you need a lot of energy to overcome the gravity that's always pulling down on us. So in the case of a roller coaster, they have some sort of mechanism that gets you all the way up to the very top of that first hill. And you sit there for a second. Now, as we're sitting there on top of that big first hill, about ready to go down the big drop, we are full of what is called potential energy. Potential energy is basically the potential you have to start moving, or it's the energy you have by virtue of your position. So for example, my cactus pin cushion here, I don't actually know if you can see it, I'm sitting on the table, sitting here, has a lower potential energy than if I put it all the way up here. The higher something is, the more potential energy it has because if I were to let this go from here versus down here, the result would be very different. So when you're on top of that hill, you're full of 100 or mostly 100% potential energy because you're so high up. Then as the roller coaster goes over that hill and down, all of that potential energy is converted into kinetic energy or the energy of motion. So as you go down that first hill, you're full of kinetic energy and you actually have enough kinetic energy to make it back up that second hill that's gonna be a little bit shorter than that first hill or a lot depending on the roller coaster because all of that kinetic energy is now enough to overcome the gravity that wants to push you down and keep you down. So now that you have enough kinetic energy to get to the top of the next hill, you're full of potential energy again because you're high up. And as you go throughout a roller coaster, you're alternating between kinetic and potential energy. At the top of hills, you're full of potential energy. And as you start to move, you're full of kinetic energy. And that's how you end up getting to the end of the ride without necessarily having to go up a giant hill again because that first hill provided you with enough energy to get you through the rest of the ride. Now, sometimes, rides will have kind of two giant hills and they'll drag you up the top of the second one because you don't have enough energy by yourself in your car to make it to the top of the second one. As I mentioned, when you go throughout a roller coaster ride, you are constantly converting between having kinetic energy and potential energy. And this is due to, this is due to something called the law of conservation of energy. And that means you can't create any more energy and you can't destroy any energy than what you started with. So the amount of energy we started with by hoisting ourselves to the top of a giant hill and potential energy is practically the same amount of energy that we theoretically have to end with by the end of the ride. So if it's not in the form of potential energy, it's in the form of kinetic energy. And then of course, you will always end up losing a little bit of energy to just friction due to between like the car and the track. But you're always gonna be going back and forth between kinetic and potential energy. Now there are also a lot of times fun roller coasters have loops in them. You'd be wondering, how do I stay in this seat despite the fact that I do have a seat restraint? Or when you go through a loop, you may feel some sort of force pressing down on you. That is due to a combination of inertia and centripetal force. Centripetal force is a force that acts on an object as it goes along in a circular path. So as you are going around a roller coaster loop, you're 
the gravity on you wants to pull you down. It doesn't want you to go through that loop. But the inertia of you moving forward wants to keep you in that seat. And then the centripetal force is pushing out on you, also keeping you in your seat as you go around that loop. Roller coasters are all physics, unless you're playing Roller Coaster Tycoon, and then it's just all a bunch of madmen making death coasters and trying to charge people to go to the bathroom. I love that game. <laughs> I hope you all enjoyed today's video and getting to learn just a little bit more about why roller coasters are so much fun. It's all science, of course. And if you don't like roller coasters, I still hope you enjoyed today's video because there was no giant drops on this ride. Today's fun fact we're gonna write is that loops in a roller coaster will always be elliptical rather than circular because circular loops provide too much centripetal force for human safety and comfort. So please be sure to rate that fun fact on a scale of one to 10 in the comments below. Like this video, subscribe to my channel, tell all your friends about it. Word of mouth is a great way to get information spread. Um, follow me on Instagram. I post videos on every Tuesday and Friday and keep it sciencey. Today we're gonna talk a little bit about the physics of roller coasters and how <laughs> when I breathe too hard in and forget my next blood process. Okay. I hope you're <laughs> a roller coaster tycoon. I'm gonna play Zoo Tycoon. <laughs>